Hey guys and welcome back to another Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over and showing you how to fence on our companion AI which we set up quite a while ago now. In that video I did making it so it follows you. In this one we're going to do it so it jumps and crouches at the same time you do. So I was just going to do jump, that's very basic, so I thought I'd also implement crouching as well. To get the two different things, just makes this video a little bit better. So we hit play, I'll show you what we're going to have. So obviously it's going to follow us like we set up last time, but you don't need that in this video if you don't want it. And if we crouch, the AI will crouch as well. And then if we uncrouch, it will stop. And if we jump, the AI will jump too. So if I crouch into here, it can go under, except it's not going to because the pathfinding goes around it. However, it will still work. And also if we crouch, uncrouch, jump, it will work perfectly like this. So again, this is another feature of just a companion AI, which will copy the player's movements, imitate it, all that good stuff that you'd want. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our animation blueprint just to make sure it's working properly. So for me that's going to be the content, mannequin, animations, third person and MVP as I'm using the same animation blueprint for my character and my AI. Now this isn't really necessary if you don't want it, however it does make the whole process a lot easier if they share the same animation blueprint because then they're going to play the same animations at the same time which is obviously what we want. And so to have them share the animation blueprint we don't want to use any casts in here because that makes it one character specific. Instead, we're going to try and get pawn owner, which means it's going to get the pawn owner of the animation blueprint. So if it's our character, it will get the character blueprint. If it's the AI, it will get the AI blueprint. And this just means it can be more general. So we want the is in air here, so is falling, so for the jumping. So out of try get pawn owner, get movement component, is falling, set is in air, or set is falling, which you probably have already. And if a crouching, which I've also set up in a previous tutorial, which you can go watch as well. So I'm not going to set up crouching, just making it so the AI will do it as well. What we've done is what we've simply got is try get pawn owner, get movement component, is crouching, and set that to be is crouching. So in that tutorial, I created my own boolean for is crouching. Don't use that. Instead, just do this instead. Now you still set that same boolean in the animation blueprint, but instead of getting the boolean from the character blueprint, you just get is crouching here from a nav movement component instead. Hope that makes sense. Let me know in the comments down below if you need more help with that. But this is what we've got here. So just a very basic general animation blueprint so they can share the same animation and movements. Once you've got that set up perfectly like that, we can close it and open up our character blueprint, which means content, third person BP, blueprints, and the AI blueprint here. Sorry, we don't want the AI blueprint. We want the third person character blueprint here. In here, very, very simple. So what we're gonna do first is get event begin play. So I'm going to hold down P and left click to get it there. If you've already used it, you can hold down S and left click to get a sequence, connecting then zero into the code you already have, and then one into this new code here. I don't need that though. So what I'm going to do is just come out of event we can play and get actor of class. And the actor class is going to be my AI that I have here. So you might have called it AI companion, anything like that, but it's just AI class. But it's just the actor class for your AI. We're going to right click the return value, promote it to a variable, and I'm just going to name this AI reference or companion AI reference, anything like that, just means that if we ever reference this variable here, we're going to be referencing the AI, which is obviously great because then we can make it crouch, jump and all that good stuff. So now this is also very simple. So what you want to do is locate your jumping code on the character blueprint, which again, you should have by default. So for me, that is here. It should be commented jump. We've got input action jump, pressed will jump, released will stop jumping. I'm just going to drag this out to give us a bit more space. And very simply, all I'm going to do is get a reference to my AI reference here that we just made. And out of this, I'm going to get jump. So jump there should be a function you already have. And out of the AI reference again, I'm going to get stop jumping. I want to connect those up to the other ones like so. So jump goes into jump, stop jumping goes into stop jumping, which makes perfect sense. And this is great and very easy to do because the jumping is already a function which is readily made for us to use. So when we're telling our character jump, we're also telling our AI to jump. And then because we're sharing the same animation blueprint, it will also play the animation as well. So that's great, very easy to set up, and it's the exact same with crouching. Because crouching is already a function created in the game by default as well, all we needed to do was set up the animations for it, which again I did in that tutorial. So find your crouch code, which I have down here, and all we're going to do again is get AI reference there. Out of this, we're going to crouch, which again is already a function here under character, connecting that into crouch there, and then again uncrouch, connecting them up like so. 
Now in my tutorial, this is where I set that boolean, which I said you don't need. So you can just delete that boolean. I still have it here, so it's crouching. You can just delete that as we don't need it, as this other way is a lot better and a lot more efficient. So we can compile and save that. That now works perfectly for us. So like I say, this should work. Very, very simple code. All we had to do was make sure the animation blueprint works properly, get a reference to our AI, and set it up so that when we tell our character to jump or crouch, we're also telling the AI to jump and crouch. So if we hit play, we test this out. If I crouch, they crouch, if I uncrouch, they uncrouch. If I jump, they also jump as well. And so this works perfectly for us. This is the very basic AI companion code setup, modified onto our following code, which we set up previously, now with crouching and jumping as well. So I think that'll be it for this video, which we've done everything we want to do. We've set up the AI companion so it will crouch and jump when we do. So it's again, just another process of it following and copying us and imitating our movements, which is great for little games, especially if you want to have it so you can control the player and the AI, just to give that little puzzle game where they have to follow you or you can possess them, anything along those lines. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.